Advanced Functions 7.5, Solving Linear Trigonometric Equations. So today we're going to be solving equations which you have already been introduced to in the section that we previously did on graphing trigonometric functions and working with trig models. So for instance, you would have used a sinusoidal model for tides to find the height of the water at say three o'clock and you would simply plug three into your equation and then solve for the height. We will look at some very basic equations and also at some equations that require a little more work because of horizontal stretch or compression. So we're going to start with this question here, sine x equals to one half. Now you will always be given an interval because as you know, sinusoidal functions continue on and on forever and ever. So you would have an infinite number of solutions without uh, domain restriction. So where is sine x equal to a half? This should be second nature to you now, like breathing out and breathing in. So here we go. Here's a sine function over the domain 0 to 2 pi. Where is it equal to a half? So you know the max is 1. So it will be equal to a half in two places. Now that is not news to you because you're also familiar with using cast rules to find angles. So you may be asked to find an exact value. If it doesn't say exact, I would give exact if it's possible. For instance, a sine, sine x equal to a half, you know that sine x is a half when x is pi over six or 30 degrees. So this would be 30 degrees right here, doesn't it look like it? Or pi over six. So we have one solution here, pi over six, that's a pretty big pi over six angle. Um, so that's my A, C, A, S, T, and we have another one over here, which would be pi over six away from six pi over six or five pi over six. Okay, so that's this one here is five pi over six. That also makes sense because this is pi here, right? And so as you can see, this is my, this is my first quadr quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant goes from here to here, and the fourth quadrant from here to here. So that means x is going to be equal to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, that's just to warm you up. Let's do one that's a little more difficult now. So this one we have 2 tan x is equal to secant x. So when you're working with these equations, what you want to do is to move things to the other side of the equation because what you want to have here is you want to have a number on this side. Okay, You don't want something equals to another function and you want to really, if you can, get it down to one function. Sometimes that's not just possible. So let's see what we would have if we wrote 2 tan x and we're going to use an identity which is that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x and secant x of course is 1 over cos x. So if I bring this to the other side of the equation I can have an equation that has a numerator that I can solve for. So if I bring this over here I know it all looks like magic, but once you've done a few, you'll say, oh yeah, that's what I should do. I should just move that over there. Um, cos x, like that, right? Eh? So I moved it to the other side. And because the denominator is the same, that's the same as me writing to sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. Still over cos x, but this becomes unimportant when I'm solving an equation. Because as you know, the only way this could be equal to zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. So that means all I have to do is sign, solve 2 sine x minus 1 is equal to zero. And now I'm going to throw everything back to the other side of the equation. So I just have sine x equals 1 half. Okay, so I'm back to the same question we had above, except... The domain this time is between minus 2 pi and 0. So if we, well, maybe I'll draw it again here. So if I have sine x, so it's going this way for 2 pi and 
it's going this way to minus 2 pi. So I want to know where is sine x between minus 2 pi and 0. So in this domain here, where is it equal to a half? And I'm trying to find these two spots here. So you do know that if you're doing negative angles, negative angles go this way. So where is sine x equal to a half would mean I'd have to stop here. And I would have another one over here. So there's one and there's two. Okay, so that's what, um, now you need to find the value of that. I'm just going to mute my computer. Okay, so this angle from here to here, remember this is going to be pi over 6, and this is 6 pi over 6. So this is going to be minus 7 pi over 6. Remember, going negative. So x is equal to minus 7 pi over 6, and the other solution would be the one way over here, now the easiest way again to do that is say, oh, this is this is 12 pi over 6. So I'm going negative. So I'm going negative all the way around to here. So that's pi over 6 is the um, related acute angle. So this was going to be minus 11 pi over 6. So you want to make sure when you're done that you're matching the domain restriction that you were given. So you're looking for those solutions. And it's always nice to draw a little picture. It helps you see where you should be. Okay, let's move on to something just a little more difficult. And that's when we have something where k is not equal to 1. So in other words, when k is not equal to 1, we're changing the, um, the period of the function, right? You know, you know that. You know that by now. You know these lessons well. So this one, ooh, 2 sine theta cos theta equals cos 2 theta. Mm. So again, like I said, you want to get a number on this side. Now, you may make the mistake of saying, well, if I divide by cos 2 theta, which you can do, let's do that first. Let's say cos 2 theta and cos 2 theta. Now, if you had subtracted this on the other side, then you would have been in real hot water because you have nothing left to do with it. So sometimes you'll find um, you hit a roadblock. So go back, because if I had said this, let's say I did this first, and I said, okay, well, the last time we just subtracted it, and I did this, then you'd say, oh, how am I going to, I can't factor cos theta out of this, um, and then you might try to switch this to another format, and it's just going to go, ooh, messy. Okay, so divide by cos 2 theta, that's going to give me a 1 here. That's nice. What is 2 sine theta cos theta, though? Because I can't really simplify this unless I do something up here. And you should be saying, oh, 2 sine theta cos theta, that's sine 2 theta magic, right? Sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta is equal to 1. Now we're getting somewhere. So sine over cos, that would be tan of 2 theta is equal to 1. Now this is where you have to be careful because if I use my calculator, you shouldn't need a calculator because you know tan of theta is equal to 1 when theta is pi over 4, right? 45 degree angle. That's your special one. 1, 1 square root 2 should be really good at finding that now. But if I do the inverse of this, that would say that 2 thetas are equal to pi over 4. Okay, now you're okay so far. You want to leave this one here and find the other place where theta is equal to 1. And that is in quadrant T here. So I had pi over 4, that's positive, positive 1 here, and it would also be here. So this is going to be 5 pi over 4. Okay, but the question asked me, you're asked to find for theta, not two thetas. So you know that when you have tan theta, do you remember what the tan graph looks like? We'll sketch it. It's... Um, 
it's this wiggly one. Remember? And it had pi over 2, and then it goes through here again, and then it has another asymptote at 3 pi over 2, and then it goes to here, to 2 pi. So I want to know where tan 2 pi equals 1, and we found these two places here, which is pi over 4, and this one over here, which is 5 pi over 4. But that's not the question. It says 2 theta. So what's theta equal to? Well, I just have to divide by 2. And that's going to give me pi over 8 and 5 pi over 8. Now the problem is that I need to know between 0 and 2 pi. So this would be tan theta, right? This is tan theta, not tan 2 theta. So if I do tan 2 theta, what's the period? The k is 2. So the period, period is going to be pi over, remember the period of a regular tan function is pi, right, from here to here. It's 180 degrees, or pi. So pi over 2. So that means that this asymptote here is going to be half of where this one was, right? So this is going to be pi over 4. And the next period is going to be at 3 pi over 4, next asymptote, sorry, this is going to be 3 pi over 4, add 2 more, you're going to get 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4, so just keep adding 2 pi over 4, so here we go. Now we've got our tan function is going to go like this now, and you're going to see that is 8 pi over 4 or 2 pi. You're going to see that you actually have, because this is a horizontal compression, right? So we have we have more values where it's going to be equal to 1. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions. So if I found these two solutions, all you have to do now is add, we're going to add the period had the period until I get close to 2 pi. Don't go over it, right? Because that's my domain here, 0 to 2 pi. And what is the period? The period is pi over 2. The period is pi over 2, or I'm going to write it with a base of 8 because I'm adding it to these fractions anyway. So that would be 4 pi over 8. So I have pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, Keep adding 9 pi over 8, 13 pi over 8, 17 pi over 8, no, that's passed. 16 pi over 8, that's this one here, right? That's 2 pi, so I have to stop. So here's my four solutions here. Okay, you might want to run over that one again just to make sure that you've got, got it clear. But it's helpful if you can make a sketch of the function because that way you can see how many solutions you should have. If you can't sketch the, um, the tangent function, just knowing that you keep adding the period, add the period, that's very important. We're going to do that again with this question here, and hopefully by the time you've done this one, you'll have it all figured out. Okay, nice one. Sine 4x equals to a half, where x is between 0 and 2 pi. Answer to two decimals. And this is read out of your textbook. So instead of giving me the answer of pi over 6 for sine x equal to a half, I need to use my calculator. So let's go here. So make sure, make sure you're in the right mode here, right? Mode radians. Okay, always double check that. It's a big problem if you don't. Okay, so I want to know I want to know where is sine x equal to a half, so second sine of 0.5 equals, and I get 0.52. It says to two decimals, so 0.52. So 4x is equal to 0.52. Where's the other solution, though? Because you know you have 2 between 0 and 2 pi. Just ignore this 4 for now, okay? Just ignore it. So 4x is 0.52. The other place where you're going to have sine x a half, so we have here and here, 
right? So this was um, pi over six, or we'll use the decimal, so 0. 0.52 radians. So this is 0. 0.52, and this is 3.14. So I want this distance here, so this is one of my solutions, that's 0. 0.52, and the other one is this one all the way over to here. So I'm going to do pi minus 0. 0.52. So I do pi minus 0.52, and I get 0 0.262. 0 0.262, you should put a zero first, it's nicer. Okay, now this is where you stop and you change this to 1x. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cold today. So x is equal to 0 0.52, so I'm going to 0.52 divided by four, because there's four x's, divide by four, Right, 4 divided by 4 divided by 4. And I get 0.13. These are approximate values, so you might want to note that. 0.262 divided by 4 gives me point, oh, 0.262. That's not 0.262. 3.14 minus 52. I must have put a decimal in the wrong spot. It doesn't make any sense at all. 2.62. It even says that on your calculator, Ms. Havrat. Okay, divide that by 4, and that's going to give me, well, let's just put it on here. So 2.62 divided by 4, and I get 0. 0.655. Mm, 0.655. We said only two, to two decimals. Well, if I had left it as this long number, I would have got 0. 0.65. <coughs> okay, so there's two solutions. That's all you've got. Are there more? Absolutely, because you know what sine 4x looks like. What's the period? Oops, sorry. What's the period if k is 4? k equals 4. Period equals 2 pi over k. So the period is only pi over 2. Oh my goodness, pi over 2. So in 2 pi's, let's go pi. Here's pi over 2. Here's 3 pi over 2. I have all these little sine functions. There's 1, there's 2, there's 3, there's 4. How many solutions am I going to have? So you want to look where is it going to be equal to a half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 8 solutions. Oh my goodness. Okay, how are you going to find those? Just like we did above. You want to add the period, so you want to add pi over 2 to each of these solutions until you get to 2 pi. So 2 pi is going to be uh, 6.28, right? 6.28 radians. So if I'm adding pi over 2, so let's go back here and find out what pi over 2 is. Pi divided by 2, and I have 1.5. Seven. So I'm going to add 1.57 to each of these numbers. So I'm going to just put a little box around our solutions. So we have this one and this one. Now we're going to add 1.57. I'll put a plus sign here so you remember. Um, six and five, 5 and 7 is 12. 6, 6 is 12. And 1 is 2. 2, 22. That's such a nice number. 10, 7, 1.70. Okay, so this is my first solution, my second solution, this is my third, this is my fourth. So even if you can't sketch this, you would know that you have to get to 6.28, right? So you've got to keep adding 1.57, 1.57. So that's 7, 12, 3, 9, 7, 3. And there's two more solutions. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So that's 5, 6. And add 1.57 again. Get good at adding. Shouldn't need your calculator for this kind of math, right? 14, 8, 4, 4.84, 6, 13, 5.36. Okay, 6, 7. And this is my eighth solution. 
So if I added 1.57 to this, let's just see what happens if we get 1.57. 4 and 7 is 11, 6 needs 14, and 2 and 4 is 6. Whoops, look, we can only go to 6.28 radians. So this one is not a solution. And we've proven it by drawing this little graph for you. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Um, be careful with these ones where you have a different K value than one because you have to uh, you have to do a little bit of thinking to make sure you're covering all the solutions. Okay, I hope that helped you. It's a snowy day here today. And um, like I said, I've got a bit of a cold. Hopefully I'll be able to keep taping for you. Have a great day. Good luck. Bye-bye.